Okay, so before we start talking about function notation, I want to talk about what we call domain and range. One of these days I'll look up why we call them this. I don't know why we call them domain and range. But what I do know is that the domain is always the x and the range is always our y. Which gives us another important fact about domain and range. Domain is always our input, which means that range would always be what? The output. The output. Yep. Our range is always the dependent one. The range depends on um, the domain, so that makes this the independent. We've talked a little bit about independent and dependent, like whenever there's money involved, the total cost always depends on something else. Right? There's other things, like I think about like, um, if we were gonna graph kids' height, we would put their height on the y-axis and on the x-axis we would probably put their age. Because how tall they are, especially with little kids, like there's a point where you guys are getting it to where you're stopping growing, right? But for little kids, the taller they are typically is, goes with the older they are, right? Not always, but dependent. Okay, we also have the final one. This is still x, but when we're talking about function notation, we replace the y with f of x. And to confuse matters, sometimes you'll see g of x or h of x. What's a constant thing here is that the x is in parentheses. This is the part that's the function notation. And we'll be working with this in a moment and I hope you'll see how this can be a shortcut and how it can be useful. So, I'd like you to title the next page function notation. This is related to this. So we often have tables where this is the input and this is the output and this is the rule. So I'm going to put x plus 3. We can make up what the inputs are. Give me some numbers that we can input for this. Three. Okay. Give me another number. Seven. Okay. A negative number. Negative 2. Negative 2. <laughs> and how about 0? And then in the middle of this call, this table, we're going to put those inputs in for the x's. So this would end up being 3 plus 3, 7 plus 3, negative 2 plus 3, 0 plus 3. Thumbs up if you're with me so far. This is familiar. We've done this, yes? What's our output for the first one? And then? And then? And three. And three. We could then take this input and we and the output and we can make x y pairs and graph this, couldn't we? This would be a point of three comma six, seven comma ten, negative two comma one, zero comma three, and we could graph that by connecting the dots and making our line. Yes. Okay. Yes. Here's where function notation is the shortcut. How many points do you think you need to have on a graph in order to be able to graph it? Two. Just two. Do I need all four of these? No. I just need two because I, if I can connect those dots, I can create the line. So put your pencil down for a moment and watch what I'm doing here.
How is that related to the table that I created? Yeah. This is the output. I could put that there as well. I was just being a little lazy. So this output matches what's in this column. Does it match any of them specifically? Yes? Okay, what about my rule? Is that related? Okay. I'm saying here, if my input, oops, I should have put an X here. Sorry about that. That should be X. So if I'm saying F of X is equal to X plus three, I'm saying instead of making this table and putting in four inputs, I'm going to just do one right now. And then I'm going to do another one. And now I have this ordered pair. And now I have this ordered pair. And I can graph my line. Did I have to make the whole table? Am I going to end up with the same line? Which one is less work? Which one looks more organized? This is what I prefer. Because I'm just like that visual, linear, I like to see it all laid out. But this is a shortcut. Does it mean it has to be a shortcut that you all fall in love with and do every time? No. I still tend to go and do tables myself, and I know this, right? But it is a shortcut, and we're going to practice it today. Um, I'd like you to capture this in your notes right now. Notice I started off with f of x is equal to x plus 3. That's me saying I'm going to use function notation for that rule. I put into the parentheses my input, which created my output. 